So yeah. the the last time that I had you on the show, uh, we it was literally right around the time that Roaring Kitty had reemerged into uh, the limelight, I guess you would say, uh, somewhat. <laughs> And he, yeah, posted his positions. Uh, turns out he somehow accumulated millions and millions and millions of dollars in, or millions and millions of shares, um, multiple millions of dollars, right up to being worth uh, at one point a billion dollars. And then, since then, the price has spiked upwards, uh, come down a bit, stagnated somewhat. Uh, we've got news that Roaring Kitty had bought shares of Chewy. What what on earth yeah. is what, what do you think is going on at the moment? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out, right? Because Roy Kitty, you know, he's absent for three years. He comes back. He buys back. He shows up first of all with you know four four point two million more shares than he had before in yeah. GameStop. So his <laughs> share position grows from eight hundred thousand to five million. Um. And he starts tweeting like a madman, and the stock price rips upward. We get a gamma ramp, and this is all also coincident with major op, major swap expiries. So there mm -hmm. were several large swaps expiring. Um, it was May 15th, May 28th, May 31st, and June 3rd were the largest swap expiries. And he comes back out of the blue and starts playing um, – playing the swap dates. Yeah. And then he goes silent in, you know, mid May after about a week of tweeting, he goes silent and doesn't say anything. And the stock kind of trades sideways. And then on, on June 2nd, I believe it is, um, he tweeted that Sunday night, another Uno reverse card. And then the next morning, the stock rips up. That's a major swap exp expiration date. Roaring kitty is, you know, like playing options again. And, the gamma ramp bills all that week. GameStop dilutes again because this massive price spike is is building and and you know potentially causing uh, you know some pain for some short. But GameStop has larger plans, right? They've been signaling through their documents that they are looking into potential merger or acquisition, and they want to build cash for that. So they have you know four billion plus of cash right now raised from these these at the money are offerings uh mixed shelf offerings and roaring kitty um posts his positions and shows that he's also has you know this massive options positions that's pinning the stock at twenty dollars um building a call wall and as the stock becomes more volatile and as it it just is ripping up and down he eventually decides to just exercise his shares and or he sells the options and just buys shares and accumulates nine million and one thousand shares in GameStop, which is which is coincidentally, right, the same amount of shares that was acquired by Ryan Cohen in August of 2020 when he started buying in heavy into GameStop and wanted to become chairman of the board, mm -hmm. um, right? Basically doing an activist investor takeover. And so, um, you know, he he posts his position several times. Then he disappears again. And then we get the news via an SEC filing in early July that, holy shit, he has bought also. So he has like $250 million of GME, you know, 9 million shares or so. And he also acquires $250 million of Chewy. And conspiracy theories were abounding of, as to what caused this, right? Um, and... You know, there's there's two or three. Maybe we could say there's there's two main options. One is that he sold this GameStop stock and and uh, basically like rolled the profits over into Chewy, which I think is that's an incredibly weak argument. And a lot of people like Amit Investing and several other Twitter, FinTwit accounts, Finance Lot, were saying that mm -hmm. they're like, look, he he pump and dumped retail, and now he's moving on to the next stock. But I don't see the fundamentals for Chewy as being markedly different than the positive fundamentals for GameStop. Mm -hmm. And I also don't see, um, you know, I don't see the squeeze potential for Chewy that there was for game and that there still is for GameStop. So the idea that he would sell after all these years of having a singular play that he made $250 million on, mm. um, 
is kind of asinine. And again, the, the reasons that were given were, one, he didn't like the, the shareholder meeting. The shareholder meeting was boring and bland. And yes, it was, but so is every single shareholder meeting mm-hmm. of every company. Yeah, they're they're basically a legal formality, right? They're not an actual long form, um, you know, discussion on the company's future plans. And then the other reason was, oh well, he's tired of the shorts and the manipulation, and the stock keeps keep getting whipsawed, and he's realizing that he's you know tired of this of this shit. Yeah, but he's been in this with much more severe price volatility, and he's still doubled and tripled and quadrupled down all yeah. along the way. Yeah. This Repeatedly. doesn't strike me as like, like yeah. yeah. Over multiple years. Exactly. It's like, do, you remember, like do you think he's really sick of almost being worth a billion at one point? Do you think yeah. do you think he's really tired of of accumulating millions and millions of shares? Yeah. I, I, no, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. There's no way. <laughs> and so and so then the question is, okay, so Okay, he didn't. He he couldn't have been getting pissed at the shareholder meeting, and he couldn't have, um, you know, been getting pissed because of short manipulation. And so, what's going on here? And I think the likely explanation is that he has more cash than we even know about, mm. and he rolled that cash into Chewy, and he's banking on a cross equities play that involves more than just GameStop. And so the working theory is he has he's getting his fingers in the pie of every company that Ryan Cohen's involved in, because maybe he believes, uh, you know, correctly or incorrectly, that Ryan Cohen has a plan, and that Ryan Cohen's plan involves his former company Chewy. And now this, I looked at the numbers; it looks unlikely that GameStop could, because Chewy's market cap is around eleven billion, mm. and GameStop's market. Market cap is around six billion, depending on where the stock price is day to day. And GameStop also has four billion in cash, mm-hmm. so it would basically take everything GameStop has to do an acquisition, a straight acquisition. Now, could the two companies merge? That's a more potential solution, where each each uh, each company shareholder gets shares in the other company, and they become one entity. Right. What, what would be right? Like, what would be the benefit there for like as a as a as a business for to to improve the fundamentals what is what does merging those two companies do for the, for each other well see that's the that's the question right and i think chewy is a pet food supply company yeah gamestop is a game and you know development um you know yeah game and and, and use collectibles basically company mm-hmm. and so on the surface these these two things have no correlation right and if you were looking at them in isolation, you would also believe that. Oh my God, GameStop's interesting, but it's not that um, it's not that unique. And and Chewy and GameStop combined don't really make a, a meaningful thesis unless you take into account the idea that Ryan Cohen might be trying to build a larger competitor to GameStop or to to Amazon. Sorry. Mm. So if he's building a larger competitor to Amazon. If he wants to build a, if he wants to have ownership in all these companies that compete against Amazon in specific segments, this a combination like this could make sense, right? And this would also justify, right, the people saying the same thing about um, Bed Bath and Beyond, right? Mm. Why is Ryan Cohen listed as a creditor on their legal documents? And I don't know, but if Ryan Cohen is trying to create a massive competitor to Amazon and he's trying to get pieces of each of of companies that are in certain industry verticals that can compete with Amazon on a one-to-one basis, yeah. or maybe the, the or the companies that were potentially seller boxed and you know were busted out by Amazon and Bain Capital, then this could be a potential um, you know this could be his potential strategy. And so yeah. again, you look at you look at all the companies that that could have could be targeted, right? Mm-hmm. We're talking about Toys R Us, we're talking about Sears, we're talking about Bed Bath and Beyond, we're talking about um chewy we're talking about gamestop yeah like all these segments are segments that that amazon now it has a virtual monopoly over but if if ryan cohen is able to cr- create kind of like a quasi amazon um competitor that's a conglomeration of all these smaller companies 
And he already has proven that he can beat Amazon, right? In the pet food segment, Chewy was able to grow to a bill, you know, eleven billion dollar company with yeah. billion dollars in revenue, Literally. competing against Amazon, proving that Amazon does not have the, you know, the a unipolistic monopoly on everything. Right? Hey, listeners, real quick, do you ever find yourself sitting watching the stock market like this? Well, now you could instead be ordering my book like this. It's the story of GameStop. You can purchase it with a hoodie, with acknowledgements, or just with the early backers edition. It's all about the GameStop story. It's the real story, not just what you've seen on films. It's exactly what has happened over the last three and a half years. And with DFB back, I'm finally able to draw a conclusion to my book. Please pre-order it. It really helps me out. And you will get it eventually, I promise. Hopefully this year.